Welcome back to the introductory series for the Lyra starter game. In this video, we're going to start uh, advancing in chapter seven in our building systems. So if you haven't watched the first six chapters, uh, they were focusing on these various topics. We're in chapter seven, where we're actually gonna take our first marketplace package, uh, the uh, stability build system by Heavy Coat. And we're going to incorporate that uh, via a game feature into our overall uh, project. So basically, I'm using this build package I think is outstanding. Uh, it's clean, it's simple, it's easy to extend, um, and it's got great support. And so I've, I've, I'm an owner of the asset, um, and I'm going to use it as an example of how to convert a marketplace asset into a game feature and then how to incorporate that into the rest of our game. Now, we'll likely do this over three subchapters. This first one, we're going to start by just taking the marketplace asset, getting it into a game feature, making sure that it works and functions inside uh, a staging project. Then in the second subchapter, we'll migrate that game feature over into the proper project. And then in the third one, we'll link it all up with the rest of the features so that we have a well-integrated building mechanics that will take advantage of all of the work that we've done in the first six chapters. All right, so this chapter, we'll start with um, first some overall setting, right? We have our final project, which is our at the top of my screen here, the DAO project, which I just prefix with whatever Unreal Engine version I happen to be working with. This is a 5.1 series. I will create two projects, one clean and one I intend to move into the game feature framework. So I keep a clean one so that I can always refer back to the original code to see how things were wired up in case an asset gets corrupted and or like typically a texture and a material can get disassociated with each other. And therefore I can always go back into the clean project, look at the material and understand what the texture references needed to be, but basically clean, I'll just, I won't touch. It's simply to go back to make sure that my, it's my control against my testing. Uh, I'll then create the second project. And uh, that's the screenshot that's in the center of the screen here. So we have a second part project. It's got no content in it at all. Uh, we'll then go to the marketplace and we'll pick up the asset we want to do, do the add to project, add it to clean, and then add it to our uh, our working project. So those are all pretty self-explanatory steps. Okay. Next, we go into our uh, staging project and under the edit plugins, we're gonna enable both the game features and the modular gameplay plugins. You need both the modular gameplay plugin and the game feature in order for this to work. So enable both of those it will ask you to reboot. Go ahead and reboot. Uh, it will then pop up this warning at the very bottom of the screen, which says that you need to add an entry into your primary asset type scanning. The easiest way to do that is click that link. It will automatically add that to your INI file and you should be good to go. After that, um, you can then hit the plus sign, the add. And if everything was set up right, you'll see um, the new plugin set up. So you'll see the game feature content only, game feature with uh, code. And then this was here uh, beforehand. So you got a choice to make between content only and C++. For this particular example, content only works fine. Um, and you just need to think about it. I have found that if I think I'm going to do C++ at some point in a game feature. Uh, I should go with this one. It's not impossible to add the C++ later to a content, uh, but it does require you to go um, in your Explorer, copy some files, search and replace some values. Um, it's just a little more, you know, it's probably eight to 10 steps that you need to do that you could save if you click this. So again, make a decision of whether you're doing a content only game feature or whether your game feature is going to require code. In this example, we're going with content only. 
Um, and then we're just going to give it a name. Now, this name is just for testing purposes, but in my normal project, it's my buildable core. So I put in buildable core. I want to keep this name, the name I want it to be when it makes it to my final project. So I want this to be consistent with the naming conventions of the destination project because um, this will create some, some links and references, et cetera. So, and note that when you do do this, it's going to create it in plugin, game features, and then whatever name you name here, you'll hit the create button. It'll create the plugin. It will pop up the, uh, the game feature uh, data asset. It will show error on the end of that asset. That's perfectly fine. You just hit save and it will save this asset and you should return to your content browser where you have your uh, content that the marketplace asset provided, which was loaded here under the under the core structure, and this new plugin test feature core and a and this data asset, which is the data asset that this is referring to. So when you hit save here, this asset was created. All right. So at this point, we have our marketplace content loaded into the core folder of the staging project. We have our plugin defined and operational. If we look at our file structure, um, you'll see in your uh, your working project, you'll have plugins, game features, and then the name that you associated with it, and a content folder. That content folder currently only has the one asset um, from the prior step. Next, if we jump back into the editor, we're going to do the probably the scariest part of this process, and, and one that will vary depending on the asset that you're trying to move from a marketplace asset to a plugin. I'm sure there's going to be a variety of uh, experiences as you try to do this. But in this particular one, uh, first shot I'm going to attempt is just grab all the folders, drag it over to the uh, test feature, and then hit move here. Move is easier than copy as it uh, is more likely to have all the reference links. And it gets messy if you have two versions of the same file name, one in the plugin, one in content. So I, I recommend move. Um, when the move is completed, and it might take a, a few minutes depending on the size of the plugin, uh, you're going to get a bunch of errors. You're going to get a bunch of asset check errors. Um, this is perfectly fine. It's simply referencing that there are some uh, soft uh, object references that are now invalidated because of the move. You can just ignore this batch of errors. Um, Pretty simple. So that is likely to occur. Next, uh, I go back into my content folder and right click the content folder and fix up all the redirects. So as I moved all of those, uh, it inadvertently creates a variety of redirects in these subfolders. Right clicking, fixing redirects will remove all those redirects. Then I can come back around and I can delete the raw folder in content, uh, which should be empty because we just took all the redirectors out of there. And then you're left with an empty content folder and all of the subfolders underneath your game feature. And so at that point, uh, you cross your fingers and you open up one of the sample maps for whatever plugin you've tried to migrate. So that should result in this scenario. So I clicked on the landscape map and it loads the map. If I click play and press F11, I basically have the plugin in the gameplay feature folder. Nothing has been changed. Nothing the way that we're operating is any different. We're not using the liar experience or any of those things yet. What we're simply doing is testing, does the plugin function the way the author uh, intended it to be. So in this case, I can place objects. Things seem to be OK there. The stability checks are happening. If I try to remove pieces, they seem to work fine. Um, and so you'll do a variety of tests here to make sure that the asset is still functioning the way the original author intended it to be. You may have some materials that need to be corrected. You may get some errors. At this point, you're going to basically be troubleshooting the asset that you moved into this uh, folder.
But if everything works out fine, um, you're going to be able to start, you know, shifting things around. So what I will typically do at this point is test it thoroughly, make sure everything works. Um, and then we'll pick it up in the next video where I'll actually migrate. The, I'll take this feature, move it into the core project, and then start to adjust some of the references to make it more Lyra friendly. All right, so hopefully that helps in getting a marketplace asset into a game feature. And then from there, uh, depending on the asset, we'll do different assets. Thanks for watching.